Lada Niva, 1977-2021 years of release. Good day, if you are wondering is it worth buying a Lada Niva and what problems you may encounter during operation, then you are at the right place. So inspection of any Niva should start with the body. A rotten underbody and cracked side members should force you to abandon the purchase, despite the attractive price tag. Corrosion in other places is more difficult. It's important to understand that the body of the Niva rots rather quickly, so that rust spots are likely to be found even on relatively fresh copies. All other things being equal, the body of those specimens whose owners periodically overcame deep forts will be in the worst condition. It's even worse if the water ends up in the passenger compartment, after which the carpet under the feet of the driver and front passenger will dry for several weeks. Naturally, at this time an environment is formed under the coating, which is ideal for the development of corrosion. Otherwise, it makes no sense to describe places prone to corrosion. Sooner or later, rust will appear on the wheel arches, trunk lid, fenders and door edges. On the version with an extended 5-door body, corrosion can also occur on the split roof. Of course, contrary to popular belief, the body of the 5-door version is unlikely to ever fall apart in half, but the owners will have to face the lack of rigidity in any case. Off-road, the extended SUV will outright lose to the version with a 3-door body. On the other hand, on the newer track, with two additional doors, it feels much more confident. Naturally, the interior of the 5-door version for the transportation of passengers and luggage is also much better adapted. By the way, the 5-door version of the SUV until 2016 was assembled on the basis of the pilot production of Aftavas. In other words, in other words, almost in artisanal conditions. Not surprisingly, in terms of build quality, it was seriously inferior to the three-door version. The situation changed only when the production of all Niva modifications was transferred to the main conveyor. The Leda Niva Salon literally returns to the times of the Soviet Union. Cheap plastic, extremely specific ergonomics, lack of convenience is familiar to modern cars, you will have to put up with this. Although there are many motorists who find a special charm in the interior of a domestic SUV, they are not at all embarrassed by the fact that the standard audio system speakers appeared on the Niva only in 2016, and even more so the owners of Lada Niva don't worry about weak cabin seals that easily let moisture into the cabin. Fortunately, it's not difficult to put them back in place with the help of a sealant. In the same 2016, VAS introduced new design windows, which finally solved the problem with the constant skewing and wedging of the side windows. It's too early to judge how the new climate control system will manifest itself. It appeared on Niva just a few months ago, but hundreds of thousands of motorists had the opportunity to evaluate the old microclimate system. The fact that it's not very convenient to use is only half the problem. The other half is an unreliable heater tap. At best it will stop opening and closing. At worst it will start to leak after which the antifreeze will be right at the feet of the front passenger. It will not be difficult to purchase a high-quality ceramic crane, however, some owners of a domestic SUV are trying to save even on this. The heater radiator cannot boast of an enviable workmanship either. The situation is aggravated by the fact that replacing it is not as easy as it seems. On those Nivas that are equipped with air conditioning to replace the radiator, you will have to dismantle the air conditioner evaporator at the same time. Naturally, after all the procedures, the system will have to be refilled with the refrigerant. As a result, the seemingly banal replacement of the radiator turns out to be not only very laborious, but also expensive. Meanwhile, the service life of the power unit directly depends on the health of the microclimate system. The ancient atmospheric gasoline engine from the Jiguli, which was squandered for Niva to a volume of 1.7 liters, does not like overheating. If for some reason the engine temperature approaches a critical level, the situation can be corrected with the help of the turned-on stove, but it's still better not to bring it to this. Since the probability that the blockhead will lead over the four-cylinder is very high, the experienced owners of Lada Niva are well aware of this feature, therefore they constantly monitor the serviceability of the water pump. If the pump starts emitting extraneous sounds and leaks with antifreeze, then it should be replaced without delay. The play in the drive pulley should also make you pay close attention to this assembly. On average, a water pump on the Lada Niva serves about 60-70 thousand kilometers. The manifold gasket will have to be renewed even earlier. It will cost about 1.5-2 thousand rubles. As for the exhaust system, it completely burns out in about 80 thousand kilometers. A regular generator cannot boast of a large resource either. If the financial issue is not very acute, then it's better to refuse to repair the old 
80 ampere generator and purchase a new 110 ampere generator. The price of the issue is from 4000 rubles. By the way, the generator is not always to blame for a weak charge. Often not the best quality wires and terminals are to blame for the problems. An important feature, if the Niva will often be operated off-road and in mud, then it's better to move the generator mounts in advance. The plant workers have not yet dealt with this important issue, but third-party workshops have come to the rescue, as is often the case. They can easily transfer the engine control unit located behind the trim at the driver's feet to a more protected place. Before the overhaul, the 1.7 liter Neva engine should last about 250,000 km, but without the features that the owners of a domestic SUV need to know, it was not without in this case. Aftavas solved the problem with frankly unsuccessful hydraulic lifters only by the end of 2008. But the details of the new sample turned out to be far from the most reliable. In the best case, they will last about 80,000 km. It's not surprising that some Niva owners who love to finish off not the most successful components and assemblies on their own, change the hydraulic valve supports for adjustable bolts. At the same time, the hydraulic timing chain tensioner is changed to a conventional mechanical one. Moreover, the hydraulic tensioner very often doesn't have enough pressure in the lubrication system, which causes the chain to dangle. If the process is started due to vibrations, the plastic chain damper will gradually deteriorate. As a result, the particles of the damper will get into the oil system, which will most likely result in oil starvation and, in the best case, a serious reduction in the engine resource. If the second chain jumps over, you will have to fork out for repairing the blockhead and replacing bent valves. Against the background of possible spending, the amount of 700-800 rubles, which will have to be paid for a new chain tensure, will seem like real pennies. Periodically pay attention to the drive belt. It's worth checking the level of its tension every 20-25 thousand kilometers. If cracks are found on the drive belt, it should definitely be replaced. The throttle assembly should be cleaned with the same frequency. This will help extend the life of the throttle position sensor and idle speed control. As for the MAF sensor, dampness and dirt penetrating under the hood greatly reduce its service life. In other words, on those newers that will constantly drive on serious off-road and take mud baths, the mass airflow sensor will inevitably turn into a consumable. The cost of a new sensor is from 3000 rubles. It's hardly advisable to talk about the reliability of those Lada Niva that were released more than 10 years ago. Of course, the owners of copies that were released from 1977 to 1993 will not hurt to know that under the hood of their car there is an 80 horsepower 1.6 liter engine from the 6, but by this time all its strengths and weaknesses have long been leveled considerable mileage. It's not known how well the repairs were carried out and the vague picture with the conditions in which the car was operated, although in any case it's not necessary to expect that the ancient VAS motor will work flawlessly. This is fully true for the 64 horsepower 1.3 liter engine, which was installed on exported copies. Such motors are probably interesting to restore, but in this case it's not necessary to talk about the full-fledged operation of the car. What is at least the crankshaft fan drive of the cooling system used in carburetor units? As a result, the ancient Nevos overheat at idle in just a dozen minutes. In 1997, the export variants of the Lada Niva received a 1.9 liter diesel engine from Peugeot. There are similar examples in the secondary market, but the fuel savings are almost always offset by big problems with the transfer case and gearbox, which simply were not ready for the high torque of the diesel engine. In addition, the diesel engine, due to its design features, operates with increased vibration, which is why the already not very strong welded seams of the body are destroyed even faster. At the same time, do not forget that many Nevos were already often subjected to loads that were not originally designed for. Lada Niva inherited the gearbox from the ancient Jiguli. Moreover, until 1993, the domestic SUV was equipped with a 4-speed mechanics from the VAS 2106. In 1993, Niva began to share a 5-speed manual transmission with the 7, but this didn't fundamentally change the state of affairs. It's not difficult to guess that the mechanics turned out to be too weak for an SUV. Moreover, on the heavier 5-door version, its resource turned out to be even less. The bearings of the primary and secondary shafts wear out for a run of 50-60 thousand kilometers. Synchronars wear out a little later. As a result, when problems begin to follow one after another, many owners prefer not to engage in endless repairs, but to buy a new complete box. It will cost about 25,000 rubles. On those news that were produced before 2009, the clutch resource 
rarely exceeded 40,000 kilometers. Only after the WAS employees began to install a unit from Valeo and began to use the slave cylinder with a higher performance, the clutch service life increased to 100,000 kilometers. In addition, the effort on the clutch pedals has become noticeably less, thanks to which it has become easier to drive Niva around the city. The VAS employees couldn't get rid of only the main drawback of Lada Niva, the hinged transmission between two boxes. It's still one of the main sources of increased vibration and noise. However, the owners of the domestic SUV have long been accustomed to rumbles and howls in every way. In 2010, a modernized transfer case was installed on Niva. It differs from the previous transfer case by better shaft alignment and rigid double row bearings. In addition, the VAS employees improved the quality of the cardan shafts, after which the vibrations and noise traditional for domestic SUV became much less. But those new ones that were released after 2014 are even better in this regard. Instead of cross pieces, they have hinges of equal angular velocities. The same car enthusiasts who still buy Niva with cross pieces should be prepared for regular injection of the transmission. By the way, from the point of view of reliability, it's the archaic crosses that look more preferable. When designing the Niva, engineers not without reason doubted that the load-bearing car body would be able to withstand increased loads from the front drive axle for a long time. As a result, a compromise solution was chosen. The front gearbox was fixed directly to the power unit. The so-called tight bridge was untied only in 2009. After that, Niva got rid of the habitual habit of packing strongly with the front end during an intensive start from a standstill. In addition, the SUV began to vibrate slightly less when idling. Not only the new transmission, but also its suspension underwent periodic upgrades. It has been seriously revised twice over the past decade. In 2009, new lower arms, different rebound and compression buffers, and slightly longer travel shock absorbers began to be installed on the car. In addition, the domestic SUV received steering knuckles from the Chevrolet Niva and modified ball joints. The innovations made it possible not only to change the wheel alignment angles, but also to increase the suspension travel. Reinforced shock absorbers appeared not only in the front, but also in the rear suspension. At the same time, Autovas engineers changed the installation scheme for the rear longitudinal rods. Their brackets began to be fastened not through pins, but by welding. Thanks to this, the Niva began to steer less spontaneously when cornering. In the summer of 2016, gas field shock absorbers and stiffer springs began to be installed on Niva. In addition, new stabilizer pads and other brake discs began to be installed on the car. Another innovation is the hub unit with bearings that do not require adjustment. At the same time, the revision of the hubs demanded from the VAS employees another modernization of the steering knuckle. Fortunately, the colossal work by the standards of a domestic manufacturer was not done in vain. The kinematics of the Niva suspension has become even better. By the way, adjustable wheel bearings, which were installed on Niva before 2016, require constant attention. Every 10-15 thousand kilometers they will have to be checked and adjusted gaps. However, nothing prevents you from getting rid of the problem node on your own. A new reinforced hub that doesn't require adjustment will cost from 10 to 13 thousand rubles. Together with it, the owners of the old Niva are better off replacing the jet nodes in the rear suspension with reinforced units. Native barbells at best will withstand about 40,000 km. The native rubber bushings of the anti-roll bar also do not last long. They begin to creak after 30,000 km. It's not for nothing that the owners of Lada Niva at the first opportunity changed them to analogs made of polyurethane. Over time, Autovas has seriously improved the braking system. After Niva received a new vacuum booster and the brake master cylinder from the Kalina model, the braking efficiency increased and the brake pedal became more transparent. As for the service life of brake discs, as a rule, they change together with the third or fourth set of brake pads. The discs themselves are inexpensive, but replacing them is quite laborious. On those news that were released before 2016, for this you will have to completely disassemble the hub. As for the fresh SUVs, they received brakes from front-wheel drive Lada models. There are no problems with their service, but there will certainly be problems with the brake lines. Even on cars 6-7 years old, they can be almost completely rotten. Despite numerous modernizations, Lada Niva has largely remained an automotive semi-finished product. That requires careful refinement. Nevertheless, copies released after 2016 look much more preferable both in terms of their consumer characteristics and in terms of reliability. If you are the owner, then be sure to leave a comment about this car. Your review will definitely help others with the choice of a car.